Hi, I'm Pastor Joshua Brackage. If you're watching this video, it's probably because you care about confirmation here at Holy Trinity Lutheran Church. Uh, and we're excited that you do. We're getting ready to start a brand new year of confirmation instruction here at Holy Trinity under some pretty unusual circumstances. You've probably uh, noticed that things aren't quite normal here at church or at your school or at your home or at your workplace. And so in the midst of this pandemic, as we're trying to be as safe as possible, uh, we're also uh, taking those same sort of safety precautions here at, uh, at Holy Trinity for Confirmation students too. The goal is still the same. The goal is still to build young Christian disciples, uh, to give them a foundation for faith that'll last them the rest of their life. So if you're watching this video, uh, you'll get a quick snapshot of what confirmation will look like this year. Uh, and if you have any other questions, call me. Pastor Joshua Brackage will make sure that, uh, that we answer those questions and, uh, and address concerns you might have too. First thing I wanted to, to, to mention that um, we know that there's a lot of people who care about confirmation. If you're watching this video and you're a, a student or uh, the family of a student, that makes total sense. You, you care about what confirmation uh, feels like, what the rhythms are, what the, what the expectations are, what exactly you're responsible for. But you might be watching this um, video because you're just a member of Holy Trinity and you care about seeing young people grow in the faith. Uh, you could be a secret pal and want to know what, what confirmation looks like this year as, uh, as you jump in and walk alongside some of these students uh, in, in their mission and their ministry together. Uh, maybe you're a part of this because you're one of the small group facilitators, one of those adults of the congregation who, uh, who helps kids process the lessons that they learn, guides discussion, and, and helps them grow in faith and relationship together. Or, or maybe uh, you're there because uh, you just care about um, where confirmation is going, uh, period. You might even be eavesdropping from another church to find out how exactly we're doing confirmation here because we're all figuring this out on the fly right now. So uh, whatever kind of uh, stakeholder you might be in confirmation, we're glad that you're listening to this today. Our con the point of confirmation, and that's really uh, where we have to start before we talk about the deliverables and the expectations and all the benchmarks we hope kids meet, we really have to talk about the purpose. And the purpose isn't... Um, isn't a hoop to jump through uh, so that you can take communion. It, the purpose is not because uh, it would make grandma really happy to see me get confirmed. The purpose is uh, to invest in young uh, Christians now so that they can have a solid base of faith going forward. Uh, there's an orientation packet that'll be available digitally and in paper at, uh, at the church office. But one of the things we do is explore what exactly the purpose of confirmation is. Uh, and so uh, there's five things that we would say is at the core of what uh, the goals of confirmation are. And the first one is just to discover uh, in, the, in the deepest way possible what it means to be a baptized child of God. Everything else flows from that, to being a baptized child of God. We are starting this season of confirmation with learning about the Lord's Prayer. And if you know the Lord's Prayer, it starts with our Father. The only way we can pray our father as if we are his children. And so uh, that just shows one aspect of what it means to be a child of God and how that unlocks a whole uh, range of, of truths about what it means to be a Christian, to live as a Christian, and the promises that we have from God because we do belong to him. The second goal of confirmation is to grow uh, not just to grow in my own head knowledge or my own heart knowledge, but really to grow in greater relationships within my family of faith. To meet your family of faith at home. A lot of the activities for confirmation this year will happen there. You'll do video lessons at home, uh, complete worksheets at home, talk about uh, sermons at home or, or worship experiences that you have. Uh, so growing in your family of faith under your roof is a great thing, uh, but the reason that we have uh, secret pals come alongside, the reason we have small group facilitators is because we hope that you're growing in relationships with the people of God uh, in your family at church, uh, your pastors and, and other adults and, and even your classmates who, uh, who are walking this journey with you. The third goal we have for confirmation is to, to build a foundation of faith for my future as a disciple of Jesus. If you have the packet, there's a little icon of a, of a cement truck in there because we really hope to cement this foundation, the gospel truth that uh, we're created by a loving God, 
that, uh, that even though we sin, Jesus loves us enough that, that he would come and die to, to win our forgiveness. And that in rising again and calling us to faith in him, he gives us his everlasting life. We, we need to have that foundation of faith to build upon uh, from this point uh, through the rest of our lives. That brings us to the fourth point, to explore what it means to apply that faith, that core foundational faith, to my everyday life. Uh, to, to know what it means to live as a Christian when I'm playing basketball. To know what it means to live as a Christian within my relationship with my brothers and sisters. Uh, to know what it means to live as a Christian as I look at colleges and future work. That we need to be able to, to see um, how this faith shapes how we think, how we act, and how we relate to, to one another. And that's uh, what begins here in Confirmation as we see the, the first ways that we can apply our faith to everyday life. And the the fifth thing, the really the keystone of confirmation is to express ownership in my faith journey uh, with Jesus and his people. Uh, I use the analogy of a car, getting the keys to the car. You now are the owner. Somebody has gifted you with a brand new car. What are you going to do with it? Um, are you going to take care of it? It's a brand new car. Are you going to make sure that uh, it's fueled up? Are you going to regularly refuel your faith by reading the Bible, by prayer, by coming to church or participating in Bible study? If you got a brand new car, uh, who's the first person that you would drive over to their house to show off your brand new gift? Who are you showing off your faith to? Who knows that you believe in Jesus? So uh, as, as kids in, uh, head towards that conclusion of confirmation, we really want them to, to be the ones who own that faith. Uh, they're not just inheriting it anymore from parents or grandparents. It's not just an obligation, uh, but it's something that they own, that they take care of, and that they're eager to show off. So with all that being said, there's a big question to answer now. Are you ready? Are you ready for confirmation? Well, your pastors are ready. Uh, I'm ready. Pastor Meyer's ready. Pastor Hankey's ready. Vicar Bangert's ready. I'll throw in the whole staff, uh, those who are invested in seeing uh, you grow in the faith and giving you the tools you need to, to express that ownership and the great gift of faith in Jesus Christ that's been gifted to you. Uh, do you know who else is ready? The adult mentors around here. They've been so eager to get back to the confirmation year. They can't wait to see you and your friends. They can't wait to have new discussions. They can't wait to, to learn more themselves because you know what helps you learn more about your faith? When you have to share it with other people. Uh, they, we've gotten such positive feedback about involving adult mentors in our confirmation process that they're just as excited about this as I know families and students are. You know who else is ready for confirmation? Jesus. Jesus who's at the core of our faith. Jesus who's at the center of our lives of discipleship. Jesus is ready for confirmation because his mission of making disciples of all nations has never stopped. He continues his work of calling people, calling his children to faith in him and then sending them out in love for God and love for one another and love for their neighbor. So your pastors are ready, the staff here is ready, adult mentors are ready, Jesus is ready. Are you ready? I have a couple questions here. Students, are you ready? Are you ready for this to explore some of life's biggest truths and some of life's greatest mysteries? Are you ready to learn? Are you ready to ask questions? Are you ready to honestly share your struggles with somebody else? Are you ready to experience the love Christ has for you in real and tangible ways. Students, are you ready to see faith in Jesus as the greatest gift you've ever been given? And to your families too, are you ready? Are you ready for this awesome and maybe intimidating responsibility of being such a key part in your students' faith formation? Are you ready to commit your time and your attention and your prayers and your investment to seeing your student grow in faith? Are you ready to commit to this as the greatest opportunity you've ever been given to help shape uh, someone's life in Christ? I hope you're ready. If you're not, that is okay. And if you're not, maybe we should have a conversation and talk about what confirmation means to you. But if you are ready, buckle up. Because you're about to walk onto a construction site. 
um, this is a place where things get messy. There are definitely safety protocols to observe and rules to follow and hazards to avoid. And along the way, we're going to discover some power tools that makes the job easier. And we get a blueprint for all of this from a master architect. And it's one that comes with a promise, uh, the promise of God in scripture. In Philippians chapter one, verse six, um, I'm sure of this, Paul writes, um, that he who began this good work in you, this work in progress, will bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. So that's a little bit of the philosophy of confirmation. Now, if you're wondering about the nuts and bolts, here's what it's going to look like. A lot of this. You're going to see a lot of uh, me or other staff members uh, or other pastors on a screen. And that's for now. Uh, we're going to do video lessons at home. Very similar if you were in 7th or 8th grade to what you experienced last year. Short videos online. You'll watch them at home. And complete short worksheets. Parents' obligations are to make sure kids are watching the videos. And when they uh, complete the worksheets, to look them over. Uh, you're not grading them, but you're saying, did, did I put enough of my heart into this uh, assignment? And if they did, you sign off on it. Um, after that, uh, the goal is to meet to discuss what you've learned at home. It's not presenting the lesson again. It's not helping catch up those people who are behind, but really in groups of four to six students paired with an adult mentor or two, the goal is to, to go further to now that you've learned about this, how do you live this? And so, uh, Weekly, we'll have uh, Zoom meetups uh, with uh, a, a group of students. Either you'll be at a group of sixth graders, a group of seventh graders, a group of eighth graders, whatever grade you're in, and, and we'll pair you with an adult leader uh, that will meet digitally. Probably during that confirmation time, that traditional 6 p.m. Wednesday window. Uh, and we'd like to keep it there because as soon as possible, we'd like to get back to, to meeting in person. While we are meeting online here at the beginning uh, and probably certainly for the first um, several weeks or so all the way to fall break plan on meeting online with your small groups uh, but as we keep reevaluating what the safest thing to do is here uh, we're going to be looking for that opportunity to bring people back up here to church together so you can hear the conversations of one another see the rest of your class maybe in person some people that maybe go to a different middle school than you do and you can meet them for the first time uh, but we're excited about uh, getting back together when it's safest uh, so until then plan to meet online to discuss your lessons so other things that you can be doing uh, alongside that too uh, right now uh, participating in worship is something that um, that we've that we've sort of scaled back on but we'd love when it's safe to have youth participating as acolytes or crucifers or working on our tech team helping run slides maybe you want to help with the altar guild and, and prepare communion that that'd be great maybe you're an usher or a greeter uh, we'd love to have uh, youth participating as soon as that's safe to do uh, but in the meantime, we're putting, uh, we're putting worship services online, just like we are in person. And your obligation as a confirmation student is to participate in worship. We hope you're there every single week. We hope you're there on Sunday with your family. And if you're not there in person, we hope you're there online. And as you're there, uh, we hope you're participating. We hope you're engaging uh, the Word of God as it's being shared. We hope you're praying with us and singing with us when you can. We hope that you're listening to the sermon. One of the responsibilities for confirmation is completing worship summaries. We talk about the scripture readings that we've heard. We talked about a song that uh, resonated with you. It talks about what was shared in the message. And if you're in sixth grade, you'll do 10 of those by May. If you're in seventh grade, it's 15. And if you're in eighth grade, it's 20. Now, I looked at the opportunities for worship that we have on the calendar right now. And you could, if you're an eighth grader, you could get all 20 done uh, before Christmas. There's enough opportunities to do that. So we think that there's plenty of time if we say by May um, for folks to be able to, uh, to complete those worship summaries. Because we hope that you're worshiping with, worshiping with us all the time. It's just some of the time you'll fill out worship summaries too to talk about um, Talk about what you learned and how God was speaking to your heart there too. So 
connect with your small group, connect with your, uh, with your secret pal. I've been using the term secret pal, but I think that's actually going away. We have enough secrets around here. Everybody's wearing a mask. Uh, everybody goes to different services. It's hard enough to know everybody here at church. Um, so we still want to, to have that connection between adults and kids, but this is going to be more of a, a prayer pal situation now, less of a secret pal. We want you to know who cares about you and who's praying for you. And then if you do see them at church, uh, they can, they can ask how you're doing and you can ask how, uh, they're doing too. One of the things that we're asking of our prayer pal families this year is because confirmation is so connected to your life inside your family that, uh, that prayer pals wouldn't just be uh, praying and investing in uh, the students, but their whole families, praying for moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas and everybody else who's helping to shape this young Christian's life of faith. So that's, uh, that's something that we're asking them to do. And so maybe even moms and dads would like to see who those prayer pals are and not keep it a secret and be able to forge more and more of those meaningful relationships. The last obligation is to serve. In the past, we've had service hours, uh, a required number that increases as you go along. And what we're really hoping for with confirmation isn't just to put in the, the number of hours and check the box, but we really want you to serve in places of significance. Uh, and maybe there's opportunities that you know to serve that we would never be aware of. Maybe there's somebody on your street, um, a lady who lives alone, who could really use help with yard work. Maybe there's, maybe there's somebody uh, who your parents know from their work or somebody you know from the school you go to uh, who could use uh, your hands and your heart to be a part of their lives in a, in a way of serving. And, uh, and we would never find out about that at church, but God's put you in that situation to know exactly where he wants you to serve. So uh, we're looking for two significant uh, service events that you get to pick. Uh, you get to determine how many hours are, are good, and your parents are part of that too, in that they will sign off on your service summaries, but do one before Christmas, so one in this fall semester. Do one before May, so one in the spring semester. Just two acts of significant service, and then fill out a report to share exactly what you did, because we're interested in seeing how God's using you in your world. Uh, in this digital copy of the confirmation packet, uh, there is uh, three, the back three pages are probably the ones that you'll care about most. There's a schedule that talks about uh, when we're meeting, what exactly the assignments are and the memory commitments, and then that parents would sign off that students have completed those video lessons, those worksheets, and those memory commitments, and parents will say, yes, how, whatever rhythm we set up for our family, yes, my student has achieved those, and so that's great. On the, on the facing page is a, is a sample worship summary, and on the back page is the, the service summary. Again, we're going to make this available digitally uh, in case we can get this out to you and you're not feeling safe to come up to church yet. And we understand, but that way you can still participate in this uh, moving forward, uh, even at a distance. Um, but if you have any other questions, questions that the packet doesn't answer um, or questions that this video has raised, reach out to me. I'm always happy to talk to you. Text, email, or call the church office. We're looking forward to hearing from you. Let's pray. Great God in heaven, we thank you for the gift of faith that, uh, that you give to us um, that makes us uh, your child. Um, what, a, what a great and awesome responsibility it is to take care of something so precious, but what a great and awesome privilege it is to, to, to wear that uh, to wear that name of Christian wherever we go, to show it off like it's the, like it's the best gift we've ever been given. We pray that, um, uh, that through this season of uncertainty, you'd walk with us, that Jesus would always be by our side, um, but that you'd be leading us toward an end, uh, an end that's blessed by you, an end where you promise to be. Uh, guide us and guard us. Uh, keep us close to you always, Jesus. We pray in your name. Amen. Look forward to seeing you.